Now we will talk about an experiment to determine the response of a material to an applied magnetic field. The construction is known as the Roland ring. Uh, so we form a torus out of this uh, material, basically. And then we have a winding around it, which is called the primary winding. So the first set of uh, coils that appears on this object is called primary winding. Uh, it's also known as magnetizing winding because this winding will be magnetizing the uh, material. So this is um, the material of interest whose response to magnetic field we were, we're trying to find. There is a second set of coils on this, uh, as you can see here. I will show it, highlight it with red. And you can see this set of coils is connected to what we call a flux meter, which measures the flux on the uh, material. So uh, this winding is called secondary winding. Also known as surge coil. And it is connected to a flux meter. Here is our flux meter. The flux meter is basically an electronic integrator. And as you can see, we have a switch S here uh, on top, uh, which connects this uh, the primary winding to an outside circuit, uh, which consists of a battery. And when the switch is closed, uh, there will be a current that is flowing through the uh, primary winding. So there will be a current I that will flow through this. Uh, primary winding in this manner and because of this current there will be a magnetic field H uh, that will be induced and it will it will flow uh, inside this material so this coil will create a magnetic field H so let's note uh, that observation uh, when the switch S is closed there will be um, a change in the um, flux that flows through the secondary winding and an induced EMF in the secondary winding which is equal to minus the number of turns in the secondary winding d phi dt in si so epsilon will be in volts this is in Weber's per second and uh, ns is the total number of turns in the search coil or secondary winding and basically what we're writing here is uh, Faraday's law as soon as we close the switch the, there will be current flowing and the current will uh, produce a magnetic field H uh, and this magnetic field H that will be produced uh, is we is something we know uh, the field produced, 
the magnetic field produced H will be um, the number of turns per unit length times the current I that flows through the circuit which is um, the total number of turns in the primary winding divided by 2 pi r uh, the number of turns per length and uh, multiplied with i so np is number of turns in the primary coil so the flux is changing the flux was initially zero and as soon as we turn on this current there is a magnetic field H and that it produces a flux through the secondary uh, coil well it depends on how the material responds to this magnetic field the flux uh, will be uh, non-zero but it may not be equal to H times A well because there is a change in the flux the in the flux meter uh, we have an electronic circuit that is basically going to give us a, a signal that is obtained by integrating the induced EMF in time. So integral as a func of epsilon dt is measured and this is a measure of uh, change in the flux of the material delta phi or phi observed in the material so we know that we are introducing a flux that is h times the uh, the area so here is the cross-sectional area uh, a of the uh, torus and H times A is a flux that we are producing with the primary winding but then the flux that is observed in the material is measured using this flux meter which is an electronic integ integrator that integrates the induced EMF uh, and uh, therefore measures the flux observed in the material okay so we have observed the flux and we have uh, possible outcomes so one possible outcome is that the observed flux that we have produced uh, that we have measured is less than the flux that is created by the current in this case if the flux in the material seems to be less than the flux uh, that is produced by the current we call this material diamagnetic uh, example for diamagnetic material for example copper is diamagnetic helium is diamagnetic etc uh, another possible outcome is that the observed flux is greater than the actual flux that is produced by the current so there seems to be an additive factor coming from the material then the material is either paramagnetic or antiferromagnetic uh, example for uh, paramagnetic is uh, sodium aluminum example for antiferromagnetic is manganese oxide iron oxide etc now if we find out that the flux meter gives us an observed flux reading that is much much greater than the flux that is produced by the current then we call the material either ferromagnetic or ferrimagnetic 
ferromagnetic material for example uh, it can be iron cobalt nickel very magnetic it can be our famous magnetite fe304 the lodestone behaves this way okay so uh, we are measuring the flux that is produced in the material as a result of uh, creating a flux with current uh, the the flux that we observe in the material seems to be different than the flux that is produced by the current so the uh, the apparent magnetic field inside that seems to be producing this flux is called b so when A magnetic field H is applied to a material the response of the material is called magnetic induction induction B so it's the B field so it's the induced magnetic field the actual field that we're applying is external magnetic field is H but then this results in an induced magnetic field in the material that is called B. Now this comes from the fact that when you're applying this magnetic material uh, the field lines uh, basically produce a polarization inside the material so that we have a north and south poles created inside the material and uh, this basically means that we are forming magnetic moments inside the material and therefore there is a magnetization that is induced by the external magnetic field and the apparent effect that we observe is the is an additive effect from the external magnetic field that we're applying plus the magnetic moments that we formed due to the applied magnetic field so that is called the magnetization so uh, you can see this here uh, there is the external field effect H there is the magnetic uh, moments that we're forming inside the material by pr applying this external magnetic field and uh, per volume there is a magnetization M and there is the total effect the apparent field that appears inside the magnetic field that is B there is a factor of 4 pi here that is for the CGS system so let's summarize uh, what happens in most materials and in free space for the BH relationship so in some materials uh, and in free space also where we have uh, zero magnetization the BH relationship is linear or we can call these linear materials so uh, we can write this relationship in CGS units and SI units the magnetic field magnetic induction is equal to the external magnetic field H plus the additive effect coming from the magnetic moments we have produced inside H plus 4 pi M magnetization this is uh, in CGS EMU units okay so the magnetic induction B has a unit that we call Gauss H is measured in Ørsted and M the magnetization which is magnetic moment per volume as you know is measured in EMU per 
centimeter cube. Now this relationship is in SI B is equal to mu zero times H plus M. So this is in SI units. And now we have the magnetic induction B measured in Tesla. The magnetic field H is measured in amps per meter and magnetization M is measured in amps per meter also and uh, you will remember that mu zero 4 pi 10 to minus 7 uh, it's either Henry per meter or um, if we go back to our discussion of mu zero it's either Henry per meter Weber per ampere meter or Newton per ampere squared so it is Henry per meter or Weber per Weber per uh, ampere meter and Newton uh, per ampere squared so um, because the magnetic field H and M have the same units here in ampere per meter you can see that uh, the Tesla the, the defined unit Tesla here is actually uh, Newton per ampere meter times ampere per meter so it is Newton per ampere meter that's a Tesla so that's one way to look at it okay so uh, this M remember is called magnetization it's basically the end result of applying the magnetic field inside that is producing a polarization of uh, the material so that it forms north and south poles uh, creating magnetic moments per volume and uh, B is also magnetic induction is also the flux density it's the flux density in the material so the flux in the material is basically uh, given by integral b dot dA or b times a now let's do uh, a unit analysis uh, for uh, this equation now one Tesla is one Weber per meter square so flux is equal to B times a or integral or integral B dot dA it is um, measured in Weber so Weber per meter square that is called a Tesla so this is in SI now uh, one Gauss on the other hand is equal to one Maxwell per centimeter square in CGS so we have the same thing flux is B, B times A or integral B dot dA but now this is in CGS electromagnetic units CGS EMU system and we can convert between the two so because one Tesla is equal to one Weber per meter squared where one Weber is 10 to 8 Maxwell's and one meter is 100 centimeter so it is uh, 10 to 4 centimeter squared you will get 10 to 4 Maxwell divided by centimeter uh, squared 
and that is Gauss. So 10 to 4 Gauss. So we reach the conclusion that 1 Tesla is equal to 10,000 Gauss. So this is the conversion between um, CGS, EMU and SI units for the magnetic induction or flux density. The flux density term, once again, comes from the fact that the flux in the material is B times A or integral B dot DA, depending on if the uh, magnetic field and the area vectors are uh, parallel to each other or not. And on the other hand, the flux in space, in free space, is h times a or integral h dot dA when you have a, uh, an angle between area and magnetic field. So this basically uh, tells us the difference between magnetic induction B flux density B or and magnetic field H. So they mean two different things. Uh, the magnetic induction is for a material and in space we have the magnetic field H. Uh, so let's summarize what we said. Well, we're trying to find out the response of a material to an applied magnetic field. We connect this material, we form a, a toroid shape out of the material, we, we have a winding around it and we connect it to an outside circuit which has a switch. When the switch is closed it's connected to a battery which induces a current flow in the material and this current will produce a magnetic field H and uh, we also form a secondary coil inside the material somewhere else which is connected to an electronic integrator or flux meter that is measuring the integrated voltage that is appearing uh, between the terminals of the two coils between the terminals of the flux meter and as a result of this uh, magnetic field H the material gets magnetized it's called also magnetizing winding so magnetic poles are induced so we have magnetic moments that are being produced inside the material as you can see here therefore we have a total magnetic moment per volume capital M so the end effect of capital M magnetization and H is an apparent magnetic field B that is appearing inside the material now if we have an S number of turns in the secondary winding the induced EMF in volts is minus NS d phi dt webers per second if you remember this would be ab volts if I write this in uh, CGS EMU. So anyway, the number of primary uh, turns for in the primary winding is NP and the magnetic field that we're producing is H is equal to N times I. Remember we have discussed this magnetic field inside a toroid uh, before and where we have seen that the magnetic field is NI and is the number of turns per length. So total number of turns n divided by 2 pi r the length gives us the number of turns per length multiplied by i is the magnetic field in SI for uh, CGS EMU units it's basically uh, 4 pi ni so which is 2 ni over r okay so the magnetic field that we are uh, producing with this current is ni 2 pi r this is in si uh, in si units or or uh, 2 npi over r in cgs emu units now the current will be in abams r in centimeters okay so the flux meter integrates the induced EMF uh, in time and gives us the observed flux in the material. If the observed flux in the material is less than the flux that is produced by the current, 
the material is called diamagnetic, for example, copper or helium. If the flux is slightly greater than the flux produced by the current, it's paramagnetic or antiferromagnetic. Sodium and aluminum are paramagnetic. Manganese oxide, iron oxide are antiferromagnetic. If the observed flux is much greater than the flux produced by the current, the material is ferromagnetic or ferrimagnetic. Iron, cobalt, nickel are ferromagnetic. Magnetite, Fe304, is ferrimagnetic. So, when a magnetic field H is applied to a material, due to the induced magnetic uh, moment inside the material, the total magnetic field that appears inside is H plus 4 pi m in CGS units, and the total magnetic field is the induced magnetic field is magnetic induction B. In CGS EMU units, B is in Gauss, H is in Ørsted, M is in EMU per centimeter cube. In SI units, B is mu0, H plus M, B is in Tesla, H is in amps per meter, M is in amps per meter. And you can see that Tesla is, uh, due to the uh, unit of mu0, which is newtons per ampere square, multiplied by unit of H and M, which is ampere per meter, is newton per ampere meter. So one Tesla is one newton per ampere meter. B is also called the flux density in the material because phi material is B times A and phi space is H times A. Now, since one Tesla is also one Weber per meter square and one Gauss is one Maxwell per centimeter square from the flux picture, where we call B as also the flux density in the material, one Tesla being one Weber per meter square is 10 to 8 Maxwell divided by 10 to 4 centimeters square, which is 10 to 4 Maxwell per centimeter square, 10 to 4 Gauss. So the conversion between magnetic induction measured in CGS EMU and measured in SI is 10,000 Gauss is equal to one Tesla.